Hello there. Um, welcome to St. Barnabas Church. If you don't know me, which I hope most of you do, I'm Father Travis, rector here at St. Barnabas. And this uh, little series, we hope to get one out approximately every week during this strange time, is what I call uh, an Anglo-Catholic uh, primer. Now the intention of this uh, little series is to introduce elements of our worship here at St. Barnabas, especially for those of you who, like me, didn't grow up in this tradition, or those of you who might be newer to St. Barnabas, or curious about this worship tradition, and are wanting to know a little bit more about um, what we do here and uh, what all the fuss is about. First of all, I just want to say uh, a little bit about what Anglo-Catholicism is. Uh, to make what could be a long story pretty short, um, Anglo-Catholicism was a revival movement, I would call it, within the uh, Anglican Church. It started off in Oxford in the middle of the 19th century. And the leaders of this movement felt that although the Reformation had uh, brought many um, gifts um, to the church and at the same time, and probably mostly because of a lot of anti-Roman Catholic sentiment in the 17th century. It had also left behind a lot that was uh, rich, prayerful, life-giving, and valuable, and uh, which we risked um, forgetting and leaving um, behind. So the Anglo-Catholic revival uh, was uh, aimed to, in a way, bring many of these elements that were risked being forgotten back into the mainstream and the life of the church. And indeed, most Anglican churches that you go to will have um, definite uh, riches from this tradition, even if they don't label themselves as Anglo-Catholic. So when you see candles, or when you see vestments, uh, these kinds of things are gifts from the Anglo-Catholic uh, tradition. The early Anglo-Catholics were, in somewhat a derogatory tone of voice, often called uh, ritualists. Um, but it was one of the deep intuitions of the Anglo-Catholics, the early Anglo-Catholics, that uh, God always communicates to us uh, through symbols, and that the sacraments are a special kind of symbol, and that the symbolic language of God is present everywhere in our worship. If only we begin to attend and to listen. So much of what I will be speaking about today and in the upcoming episodes uh, over the next weeks will be helping us to understand why we worship the way that we do. The rich symbolism of our words, our actions and gestures, why especially sacramental worship calls us to worship with all of our senses, our senses of touch and smell, and of course, uh, hearing and taste, and uh, how God uses all of these things as a vehicle of his grace. But I want to begin today with something very, very simple, and that's just to talk a little bit about and explain the difference between the three main ways that we celebrate uh, the Eucharist here at St. Barnabas. So every weekday and on Sundays at 8 o'clock, we worship with a stripped-down version of the Mass, which we traditionally call Low Mass. And if you just come over here with me, we always celebrate uh, the Low Mass uh, here in the Lady Chapel, which is our uh, beautiful uh, side uh, uh, chapel. Now the Low Mass is called the Low Mass, uh, because it is celebrated with only the efficient, the priest, and one server. And then also, of course, it's entirely spoken. There's no um, music with the, uh, the low mass. So that's uh, the actual, uh, most of the Eucharist we celebrate, of course, every day of the week and on 8 o'clock on Sundays, the low mass. Now, the usual 1030 Sunday service at the high altar is a sung mass. And I'll come back to that momentarily for it's easier to explain first the kind of service we have on high holy days, special feast days, which is what we call uh, the solemn high mass, traditionally called the solemn high mass. 
Solemn, by the way, doesn't mean sad or downcast. It means sacred, full of importance, and conducted with due ceremony. So the Solemn High Mass is the traditional standard way of celebrating the Mass. So every other way is a variation on this standard uh, way of celebrating, which means that uh, it's not so much dressed up as the others are dressed down. And you're, you will recognize uh, that we are celebrating uh, Solemn High Mass at St. Barnabas in uh, three ways. The first, of course, that it is a special feast day. And there are many throughout the year, of course, but Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, um, all of these uh, special feast days. Um, secondly, uh, because there is usually, but not always, a procession uh, around the church um, on, when we're celebrating uh, solemn high masses. And these processions are a remnant of what used to be always held uh, out of doors. The whole, uh, the ministers and the congregation would, would process out of doors. Uh, and now uh, at St. Barnabas anyway, we only have one such outdoor procession and that's uh, of course on Palm Sunday. So third and most importantly, because this is what actually defines the Mass as a solemn high Mass, you will see that the priest who is officiating at the, de at the Eucharist is assisted by both a deacon and a subdeacon. So who, who are these folks, deacons and subdeacons? Well, um, first of all, the subdeacon, the subdeacon is uh, a lay person, so not ordained. And you will see him. This is his special place. It's called the subdeacon step, the lowest step uh, here. And the, uh, the subdeacon wears a special vestment. Here it is, this beautiful red uh, vestment. And uh, that, is called, that is called a tunicle. And that, uh, this is our red uh, tunicle for uh, Palm Sunday and for Pentecost. Then uh, the deacon step, of course, is next in line, right here. The deacon stands here, and he uh, or she is always an ordained uh, person. And they uh, wear a dalmatic. And the only difference between a dalmatic and a tunicle is this bar that goes across here. So that's uh, our beautiful uh, dalmatic here at St. Barnum. Finally, the top step is the step on which the altar sits and also on which the celebrant steps that has a special name that's called, uh, called the foot pace. And at St. Barnabas too, um, we have a little way of making the, uh, the solemn high mass is a little bit more festive and that is instead of the regular gong which we use on the sung mass, at the uh, celebration of the Eucharist. Instead of the gong and a solemn high mass, we have beautiful bells. And actually, that's just part of our playfulness. So the movement of uh, the choreography of a solemn high mass is actually fairly complex. For this deacon and the subdeacon move together in concert with the celebrant and the three sacred ministers, subdeacon, deacon, celebrant, are also moving in concert together uh, with the uh, other um, ministers that are in attendance. Of course, one of which is the crucifer, who carries the cross, and this is our cross for wooden cross for Lent. Our ordinary cross is a beautiful silver cross. Uh, also the two acolytes who carry the candles. Also uh, the thurifer, who's usually over there, who uh, carries the incense, along with uh, often when we are fortunate enough to have a boat boy or boat girl uh, carrying the incense boat and um, following the uh, thurifer, and then also we have um, an MC and the master of ceremonies who is conducting the whole 
the whole business. Uh, so all together, we're moving in, in concert in a special kind of choreography. And this, uh, I would like to bring up some sort of part of which I think uh, many people can sometimes find difficult. And that's that, uh, as you can see, because of the lineup of the steps and how the, uh, the service is conducted, there is a sense of hierarchy that's embedded uh, within our service and that makes some people especially in our day and age a little bit uncomfortable because we tend to associate a hierarchy with power and then we have learned to associate power also with injustice but we should remember that although we worship a God of power and might uh, the Lordship of God was demonstrated by Jesus whose uh, crown was a crown of thorns and whose throne was a cross, and that tells us something about um, what power means um, in our tradition. And so when we uh, think about the service, when we watch the service, instead of hierarchy, we can also consider the choreography of the Mass as reflecting the good ordering of the creation, each creature serving God in the way it has been given to serve, and each assisting each in the way that they have been given to do so. And that, that service of love is at the center of the whole drama of the Eucharist. So if, um, other than, uh, of course, the hymns, uh, many of the parts of the solemn high mass are uh, sung. Uh, some parts by the choir, the Kyrie eleison, the Sanctus, and the Benedictus, the Agnus Dei. Other parts by the whole congregation, we sing the Gloria together, we sing the words of the Nicene Creed and uh, the Lord's Prayer together. In this way, the solemn high mass is no different than our regular sung uh, Eucharist. So that the most significant distance between the two uh, is really in the choreography, deacon and subdeacon working together with the other uh, ministers in the sanctuary. So I think that that is enough for today. Uh, beginning next week, I will begin to look at the parts of this, uh, the different parts of the Sun Mass, uh, the words and gestures that accompany those words. And so in the end, I would like to offer you a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and evermore. Amen.